Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now today I am in Forden Bridge Cemetery and we've come to find the final resting place of an artist by the name of Augustus John. Now I will tell you a little bit more about him real soon, but he is well, well recognised for his uh, portrait work on canvas and in the early um, 20th century his work where he used to paint rich and famous people as well. Um, if you're into your art, you may know who he is. I'm not really into the big art scene. I don't really know much about it. I would love to be a creative artist. Sadly, um, with a pencil and a pen or a paintbrush, I'm not. I can be creative in other ways, of course, like bringing these videos. I hope they're creative for you. Um, but yeah, so if you know anything about him at all, always leave your comments down below. We're gonna find his final resting place. I'll tell you a little bit more information about him real soon. Um, and it's quite cold and chilly today. <laughs> okay, so do me a favor, uh, leave your comments down below. If you know him, if you don't know him, if you've never heard of him, um, if you're into art, is he someone that's inspired you? You know, did he, did you watch his, or sorry, what, you wouldn't have watched it. Did you look at his artwork and think, wow, I'd like to be like that and you know if you're creative yourself follow in his footsteps in any way shape or form I don't know I'm really going in the dark here guys because I don't know a lot about art at all anyway but I know that there's lots of you viewers that are because especially when I did someone like Tony Hart's um, final resting place loads of you guys got involved and said that he inspired you into art so you know it's someone different it's a, a different person um, and of course he's world renowned for, for his artwork so I wanted to come and pay my respects today at Fordham Bridge beautiful cemetery out in the open um, nice and peaceful middle of nowhere love it okay so I'll tell you now about Augustus John and we're going to find his final resting place Augustus Edwin John OMRA 4th of January 1878 to the 31st of October 1961 was a Welsh painter, draftsman and etcher. For a time he was considered the most important artist at work in Britain. Virginia Woolf remarked that by 1908, the era of John Singer Sargent and Charles Wellington Furze was over. The age of Augustus John was dawning. Born in Tenby at 11, 12 or 13, the Esplanade, now known as the Belgrave Hotel, Pembrokeshire, John was the younger son and the third of four children. At the age of 17, he briefly attended the Tenby School of Art, then left Wales for London, studying at the Slade School of Art, University College London. He became the star pupil of drawing, teacher Henry Tonks, and even before his graduation, he was considered the most talented draftsman of his generation. In 1897, John hit submerged rocks diving into the sea at Tenby, suffering a serious head injury. The lengthy convalescence that followed seems to have stimulated his adventurous spirit and accelerated his artistic growth. In 1898, he won the Slade Prize with Moses and Brazen Serpent. John then studied independently in Paris, where he seems to have been influenced by Pierre Pouvez de Chavannes. In February 1910, John visited and fell in love with the town Martigues in Provence, located halfway between Arles and Marseille, and first seen from a train en route to Italy. John wrote that the province had been for years the goal of my dreams, and Martigues was the town for which he felt the greatest affection with a feeling that I was going to find what I was seeking, an anchorage at last. I returned from Marseille and changing at Paz de la Ansas, took the little railway which led to Martigues. On arriving, my premonition proved correct. There was no need to seek further. The connection with Provence continued until 1928, by which time John felt the town had lost its simple charm and he then sold his home. For a time shortly after his marriage, he and his family, which included his wife Ida, Mistress Dorothy McNeil, and John's children by both women, travelled in a caravan in gypsy fashion. Later on, he became the president of the Gypsy Law Society, a position he held from 1937 until 1961, at the time of his death. 
By 1913, John was successful enough to commission a new home and studio at Mallard Street, Chelsea, from architect Robert Van de Hoff. In December 1979, John was attached to the Canadian forces as a war artist and made a number of memorial portraits of Canadian infantrymen. The result was to have been a huge mural for David Beaverbrook and the sketches and cartoon for this suggest that it might have become his largest large scale work. However, like so many of his monumental conceptions, it was never completed. As a war artist, John was allowed to keep his beard, according to Wyndham Lewis. John was the only officer in the British Army, except for the King, who wore a beard. After two months in France, he was sent home in disgrace after taking part in a brawl. Lord B. for Brooke, whose intervention saved John from a court-martial, sent him back to France, where he produced studies for a proposed Canadian War Memorial picture although the only major work to result from the experience was fraternity. By the 1920s, John was Britain's leading portrait painter. John painted many distinguished contemporaries, including T.E. Lawrence, Thomas Hardy, W.B. Yeats, Alastair Crowley, Lady Gregory, Tallulah Bankhead, George Bernard Shaw. Perhaps his most famous portrait is of his fellow countryman, Dylan Thomas whom he introduced to Caitlin McNamara, his sometime lover, who later became Thomas's wife. Portraits of Dylan Thomas by John are held at the National Museum Cardiff and the National Portrait Gallery. It was said that after the war, his powers diminished as his bravoir technique became sketchier. One critic has claimed that the painterly brilliance of his early work degenerated into flashiness and bombast, and the second half of his long career added little to his achievement. However, from time to time, his inspiration returned. On the 24th of January, 1901, John married Ida Nettleship, daughter of the artist John Trivet Nettleship and a fellow student at the Slade. The couple had five sons, David John, Caspar John, Robin John, Edwin John and Henry John. Despite the fact that Nettleship was John's wife, housekeeper and the mother, of five of his children, there is not a single mention of her in Chiroscaruro, his 1952 memoir. From 1905 until her death in 1907, Ida lived in Paris with John's mistress, Dorothy McNeil. A bohemian star icon, she lived with John for the rest of their lives, having four children together, though they never married. One of his sons, by his wife Ida, was the prominent British Admiral and First Sea Lord, Sir Caspar John. His daughter, with Doralia, Vivian John, was a notable painter. He joined the Peace Pledge and Union as a pacifist in the 1950s and was a founder member of the Committee of 100. On the 17th of September 1961, just over a month before his death, he joined the Committee of 100's anti-nuclear weapons demonstration in Trafalgar Square, London. At the time, his son Admiral Sir Caspar John was First Sea Lord and Chief of Naval Staff, he died at Fordenbridge, age 83. He is said to have been the model for the bohemian painter depicted in Joyce Carey's novel The Horse's Mouth, which was later made into a 1958 film of the same name, with Alec Guinness in the lead role. So there's all the information there about Augustus John, and we will now have a little look for his final resting place. Okay, so I've been having a good look around, and you know what? I think I found it. It took me a long time, but I think I've got it. Let's have a look. Okay. I've had a look, to, I've had a look at all of these, and it's just like, it's a bit messy. Uh, there's a cross at the top, in loving memory of Augustus John, who died at Fordin Bridge. Um, 10th October 1961. There we go, we got it, we found him. Bless. So there we have the final resting place of Augustus John. It took me a while to find him because <laughs> obviously it's a bit, 
bit dirty, bit worn and torn, uh, but it's been here a while now, so bless you. Thank you, Augustus, and your work is just continuing to pull people in worldwide. You know, people still looking at his amazing work, so bless you and thank you so much. There we go, Augustus John. Took me a little while after having a good look around Fordham Bridge Cemetery. It's a beautiful place here. Um, you know, if you're ever passing, come by, because Augustus there, and there's another one over there, um, well-known celebrity, which I won't tell you in case I put this video out first. So I'll keep that quiet, but you'll, you'll see it one way or another. Just keep watching the channel. Uh, if you like that today, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're into your art, like I said earlier on, if Augustus inspired you in any way, shape or form, please let me know. Leave some comments down below. Uh, thank you as always for watching and I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy.